Hello, I am G. Madan Kumar uh, from Department of Aeronautical Engineering, Assistant Professor, Sadibam Institute of Science and Technology. Today we are going to discuss the topic Potential Flow Theory. The Potential Flow Theory is applicable for uh, the field of aerodynamics as well as uh, the fluid dynamics as well as the automobile aerodynamics. In this, basically uh, this Potential Flow Theory is fully suitable for aerodynamics. What is meant by aerodynamics? That is air plus dynamics that is motion of air. So, in this according to the definition the study of motion of air particularly interaction with the solid object such as an airplane wing that is said to be called as an aerodynamics and uh, it is a subfield of fluid dynamics, gas dynamics as well as the other fields. So, you may see some of the fluid mo models or fluid dynamic model that has been impacted here. Next, uh, we are going to discuss about the overview of aerodynamics. What is it? Step one is fundamental. We have to discuss about the uh, things which are dealing with kinematics, that is flow kinematics, and then the things dealing with elementary models. This elementary models is uh, the absolute potential flow theory, which we are going to evalu evaluate here. And then the theoretical calculation of lift, drag, pitching moment using thin air foil theory that is nothing but the subsonic wing theory. As per this, we are revealing the aerodynamics. Next, uh, we are going for main learning objectives. So, what are the things we are going to learn in potential flow theory? First one is, it is in 2D flows. So, about 2D flows, we are going to discuss it today. And then, rotational and irrotational flows. From these examples, in these images, you can see here, here the fluid is rotating in uh, clockwise direction, but what happens to the rotational flow? And here the fluid is said to be in a rotational flow, where here the fluid particles is located stationary and it is spinning out. And then we are going to deal about the third criteria that is fluid kinematics. What happens to the flow field parameters over the object which is uh, vary, varying with the flow conditions? and then flow field measurements. So, all these things we are going to discuss in this session. And here uh, we have 2D flows. What is meant by 2D flow? So, it has been classified as potential flow and real flow. And the potential flow means it is nothing but steady, inviscid, incompressible and irrotational flows. And then we have real flow that means unsteady, viscous, compressibility effect and the rotational flows. And then what are the major things focused here is steady and steady and then inviscid viscous and then rotational irrotational. What is meant by uh, potential flows that is steady, inviscid and irrotational and real flow is unsteady, viscous and irrotational. Next thing uh, we have the example like this. This is nothing but the potential flow that is the image which has been captured and this is the image which has been captured instantaneously and uh, it is nothing but the real flow. And here about this flat plate whenever we have the flow through a flat plate we have the flow dynamics as well. And then we have 2D flows. So, in this potential flow theory according to 2D flows inviscid and viscous. So, we need to define the properties that is flow properties remain constant with respect to time is steady flow and then flow properties changes with respect to time is unsteady flow. And the inviscid means the fluid does not possesses friction uh, that is said to be called as an inviscid fluid. The fluid that possesses friction is said to be called as an viscous fluid. And then we have the potential flow theory, rotational and irrotational flow. That is, uh, what is meant by rotational flow and what is meant by irrotational flow. Not all flows having circular streamlines that are said to be rotational, and it has been rotated with respect to r theta plane. Okay, here we have the streamlines and velocity profiles of uh, condition A and condition B. Look at the figure, flow A and flow B. So flow A is having the fluid that is spinning around and this fluid is also turning and here we can see the flow B where the fluid is stationary but it is spinning right. So, based on this we will be having an example here that I am showing you that uh, this is the fulcrum center where all the fluid is rotating like an uh, rotational flow and then we have the giant wheel where it has been rotated like an irrotational flow and then we have the 
fluid kinematics. Fluid kinematics uh, deals with uh, describing the motion of fluids without necessarily considering the forces and moments that causes the motion. So, without any forces and the moments, we are going to study about the fluid motion. And uh, here, we will be having the uh, billiards as an example. We have the billiards that you are giving one force to this ball, but this ball is stationary. Without directly hitting this ball, okay, we are just hitting this uh, uh, white ball and we are making this to move around. And then this is an macroscopic view of a fluid continuum. We have the interaction between the fluid particles. It is not an easy to describe like this case. We have the distinct objects and uh, we have the distinct field fluid particles that has been moving around the flow. Let us go in microscopic view and here without necessarily considering the forces and moments that causes the motion. This is nothing but the Lagrangian description of the fluid kinematics. What Lagrangian do is, it is the fundamental concept which you have been learned from thermodynamics. Namely, we have the mass of fixed identity. When we have the mass of fixed identity, so with respect to that time to time variation, how the mass has been varying. From this, we have the Lagrangian dis description that requires us to track the position and velocity of each individual fluid parcel, that is fluid particle and it has to be parcel of fixed identity. As a parcel of fixed identity, here is the example. So we have fluid at A, B and C, which are all moving in different directions with different velocities from different positions. Each priority of fluid and its interaction will be measured. Next thing, we will be having the Eulerian model. So, the Eulerian model is said to be the net model, that is net continuum model. How it is look like? We have the control volume. From the control volume, you are defining one point where one of the fluid particle is considered and how much the fluid particles will come in and out that has been positioned with the help of this control volume. And here in this, we have the Eulerian description where the net mass flow rate of the fluid particles from uh, the inlet field to the exit field with respect to space variables, field, uh, field variables and the time variables has been considered. Next thing, we are going into the Newton's second law. So, how Newton's second law is playing a major role in understanding the potential flow theory. We have the force vector, acceleration vector, velocity vector, all the vectors and the field has been clearly defined with the help of Newton's second law principle. If we have a particle of mass m, which is moving towards one direction, the velocity of particle will be acting perpendicular to it and then we have fluid particle at the time t plus dt. And here we have the other example that we have the nozzle. The nozzle end is said to be having the fluid particle that has been discharged and finally we have the garden hose nozzle as an example where the water is moving at different stream direction because here the fluid particles is coming out and the velocity of fluid particles is said to be in perpendicular to it. It is acting always perpendicular to it. And the acceleration of the fluid and the velocity of the fluid, which one is we have to consider? We have to consider the acceleration of the fluid particle because that fluid particle is coming out, but the velocity is always normal to the, uh, normal to the acceleration field. Next, coming back to potential flow terminologies, flow field measurements. What are the uh, flow field parameters we have to consider? We have stream lines, streak lines, path lines, every lines uh, are said to be with respect to the flow field measurements. Now we are discuss about stream lane. What is meant by stream lane? Stream lane is a curve that is everywhere tangent to the instantaneous local velocity vector. And here we have the example that we have the stream lane and we have the velocity. Uh, tangential to the velocity, the line which you draw is it nothing but the stream lane. Next, about stream tube. What is meant by stream tube? If we have all stream lines that are connected together in bundle form, then it is said to be called as a stream tube. So, see here we have the convergent stream tube and then divergent stream tube in the bottom. And this is the example that all the stream lines are connected together as a bundle form and it is said to be called as a stream tubes. And we have the convergent and we have the divergent. Next thing, we have the next deal that path line. So, what is meant by path line? Path line is the actual path traveled by an individual fluid particle over some 
time period. Here you are considering the fluid particle at this time and the same fluid particle has been tracked on the other field and the same fluid particle is tracked on the other field. Respect to time to time, okay, you are just ensuring the where exactly the fluid is going on. That is a typical as a path line. This is also one example of path line. So this is the photographic image or X-ray image and we are just considering the fluid particles and its movement. That is uh, the, the water which has been poured in the glass. And the path lines, it's produced by white tracer particles suspended in water. It is nothing but time exposed photography and it has been uh, looking the elliptical shape. So we will be seeing the elliptical path during one wave period. So during one wave, uh, what about the fluid particles nature? It has been studied. And we have the path line equation that is x is equal to x dot and time varying component of velocity function. Next, we are going to discuss about stick line. Stick line is nothing but the fluid particles that have passed sequentially through a prescribed point. What is meant by that? So this is the example that we have a smoke or dye. I am just injecting here and these injected fluid particles will be going and impacted on the object and the flow which is having the normal uniform flow on one side and we have the dye or smoke flow which will be ingested on the other side and we will be seeing the streak line of the flow. And finally, about this streak line, we have the tracer particles. So these are nothing but the tracer particles from 1 to 8. So the tracer particles from 1 through 8 were introduced sequentially and when we have the flow as a steady flow, if the flow is said to be a steady flow, then the stream line, path line, streak line all are said to be equal. Let me give the other example. The streak lines produced by colored fluid introduces upstream and the, if the fluid is said to be steady, all the streak lines are of the same like stream lines as well as the path lines. So this has been introduced by Honora. And here we have the next one about timeline. What is meant by timeline? It is nothing but the set of adjacent fluid particles that were marked at the same instant in time. So what is that? Let us consider a pipe. So in this, the fluid particles is flowing. Starting at timeline t is equal to 0, the flow is 0. And then at timeline t is equal to t1, during that time, see the velocity profile. It is increasing. And again, at timeline t is equal to t2, the velocity profile is once again increasing and time t, t is equal to t3, velocity is again increasing. In this waveform, it is increasing and the timelines are formed by marking a line of fluid particles that are been watching as a line movement. And then we have the line movement tracing of hydrogen bubbles in the water. The hydrogen bubbles which are present here, you can see that the bubbles has been initially formed and these bubbles will be increasing accordingly as the uh, fluid friction between the plate and the fluid interaction, okay, the hydrogen bubble formation is increasing and it leads to turbulence. After this, we are discussed about the basics of potential flow theory and uh, next session we will uh, discuss about the potential flow equations and elementary flow models. Thank you.